we are back with another episode of what now welcome everyone good morning good evening good afternoon depending on where you are tuned in from i have another wonderful guest his name is charlie tuna rapper artist uh known for uh pretty much jurassic 5 ozomatli so let's see if um he can uh, share some inspiration and motivation with us today i see that instagram is having problems so let's hope that um that it'll stay up and uh, that we can have another great conversation. And um, I found out that there's a lot of people interested in doing these talks and even tuning into these talks. So I'm just going to keep going. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in. I hope everyone is being safe and healthy. We are on the verge of another lockdown out here. Um, I actually uh, was in London for a few days and I wasn't able to go anywhere technically. Uh, quarantining, face mask, um, washing hands, all of that, distancing. It's crazy. The world is just still crazy. Um, but this is why we provide inspiration and motivation here. So let's uh, keep this What Now series going as long as everybody is um, interested in watching. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get um, Charlie in here. I see him. We can start our inspirational talk. Let me know where you guys are from. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the question box and we'll get to that. Hello. Long time. How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? I mean, you know, I'm okay. (laughs) You see how unsure I said that? I'm okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's good. I'm glad you are okay because that's what we want. We want people to be okay and... Um, one of the things that I started doing this live show for is for, you know, making sure people are okay and getting a little positivity and a little inspiration and a little, you know, uh, support from people that they either admire, look up to or respect. Uh, and you fall in that category. I appreciate that. But yo, that's really on the real. That's, that's really dope because I, you know, as much, um, as the world needs protest and needs push for change and in a forceful manner, it also needs a a, a soothing, you know, like it's a balance there. I think I always think so. I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just honestly, when the pandemic hit, I started this, uh, this little series, uh, end of March. I, that was literally the thing that I thought of. Let's bring some positivity. Everybody was down and frustrated. Uh, you know, incomes gone and and livelihoods are lost. So I didn't think it was going to grow out to be this big. We're in October now. You are my talk number 61. Wow. (laughs) And so, yeah, I don't even think about it until I have to write down the number. And I'm like, oh, dang, it's 61 already. And uh, yeah, and I'm not even closely done because there's so many people lined up um it's 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 insane like yeah i'm i'm very happy that this has become an actual go-to thing um yeah i'm proud of you too (laughs) you know you remember back in the day me and you had a conversation about you being the the go-to girl the go-to girl for real so i mean it is what it is i you always was that anyway for me and for a lot of people that i know in the industry and outside so it's you know it is what it is man it's just like you You feel right into place (laughs) my my week has started so great um i don't know if you've seen the talk i did with eric sermon but um no i missed it he called me yesterday on video screaming at me saying hey everyone is is talking about our talk and you know some big media blog picked it up and you know you got to keep doing this and you're always been you know the person that can do these talks and you know your stuff and so he was basically you know uh putting a lot of feathers in my ass as we call it over here (laughs) (laughs) but i appreciate it yeah especially um, from him it's yeah and it's it's nice to be just first of all recognized for the hard work that I've been doing even though I mean nobody knows me which is fine I'm not an artist but I've been putting in the work and for people to to say that to me people like you and Eric it's to me it's like it's that that's why I do this to make Man. sure that everybody is is getting their platform and and the and the the fans get their information 
That's right. That's what's so, up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But yeah, especially coming from Eric, that's dope. That's a real, that's an amazing compliment. Uh, yeah, man. Sure. But he's he's always been a supporter mm -hmm. of mine. So I'm like, you know, I can't I can't be happier to have developed the friendship with him over the the past ten somewhat years. Uh, you know, I meet a lot of artists, but not everyone becomes a friend. And I'm also happy to have you as a friend because you've been around for a long time as well. Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. Too, yeah, so we've been friends good. for a long time. Time yeah. flies, though, because yes, you does. think about it. Yeah. And you've been always, a, you've been a person that's always here. Like, you come on the regular. I love y'all country, though. I ain't going to even lie to you. you. You know, we, me and you've had this conversation. So before <laughs> I even go into this, this is for the people who haven't been privy to those conversations. Right. One, I love Amsterdam. I love the Netherlands, but I love Amsterdam because uh, it has been just as an American, uh, you know, I'm speaking from a, a, a citizen here. It's been the most free I've ever felt, you know what I'm saying? Just walking around like people don't, right. it's not that you you guys don't care, but it's like, it's a proper way to to respect people's, not only like space, space but, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Just uh, who they are. And, and yeah. yeah, just their choices and freedoms and things. Ain't nobody looking at you like with a judgmental eye, like, except for if you're doing something outrageous, like, right. but, you know. But other than that, everybody's just like, yeah, it's all good. And everybody's yeah. really warm. And I mean, I don't know, man. I just love that city. Aside from all of my favorite uh, vices, so to speak. Right, <laughs> but, right. Yeah. Everybody you know knows. What I mean? Everybody knows. Um, yeah, it's a sweet place, though. I, I, that's one of the places in the, in, in the world that if I wasn't living where I live right now, I'd live there. So, yeah. Well, talking about traveling, you know, getting into this whole pandemic saying why I started this. Uh, what has been the biggest effect on you personally and professionally, um, you know, dealing with COVID-19? Um, personally, um, it's like a, a few things. It folds over. Um, my mom is uh, has sickle cell, like really bad. So right. she is a, a person who is uh, at high risk of catching this and then being somebody who may not recover from it. Um, it, her, her sickle cell, um, has affected her lungs over time and she, about, um, you know, where she goes, you know, who she's around, who I'm around, uh, uh how clean of the certain, you know, everything, just trying to really be as, as clean as possible. But then I have a job that deals with the public. So I, I, when I'm out. You know, especially like these this last couple of uh, last weekend, I got a chance to do two shows with Slightly Stupid in a situation that I, you know, I, I said to myself, if the world is going to change into this, it'll be definitely safe, but it'd be definitely strange. It was strange. It was like, yeah. it was really strange, but it was safe. It was really clean and, and, you know, spaced out and everything was like, you know, I just felt comfortable. I'm like, okay, cool. Well. I could actually perform, unlike I thought, you know, unlike right. the media and everything was coming. I was like, man, this is over. So they they stopped us. I don't know. But you know, so right. I um personally it's affected me like that. And it's affected me personally in a way it, like mentally, where I've just been like, um, this is the longest I've been home in twenty four years. Yeah. Twenty four years. You're yeah. So, so I'm just like shush, shush, shush. <laughs> It's a it's an old African proverb that says, "Children have fast feet, but the elders know the road." And damn it, I know the road. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, so just being home, like I won't say if it, it feels like I'm like locked in and prisoned, but I'm just like, damn, like you know, this is the most I've spent in a house I've lived in for twenty years. It's crazy. But do you consider that, because you you state that, but do you consider that a positive effect or a negative effect? Um, well, you can get positives, positives and negatives from both right. things. And for me, you know, like I've, I've, uh, I've been a victim to my own mouth saying, uh, man, I wish I was at home. All this traveling I'm doing, <laughs> you know, saying it, then it hit me like this. So being that I've been home, I've been trying to really take advantage of the things that I haven't been able to do while I travel, like paint right. a lot. You know, I've been painting a lot. That's that, been yeah. really fun. You know what I mean? And and then uh, it's open doors uh, in places that I never thought. Like, I, I'm selling these big old paintings. I'm like, oh, do you want to buy this big old thing? Right. Well, okay, let's go. You know what I mean? So, I still I, want a painting of you in my in my house because I got, you know, stuff here from, from my friends. But, yeah. you know, shipping and all of that is just too much. Um, you know, I think 
I was talking to uh my, my man Spice. You know Spice in uh, in England? From from the Brotherhood old school rap dude. But anyway, he he we were saying the same thing. And I was like, I have to come out there because I I want, you know, when this when this all calms down, God willing, I want right. to, uh, to to do an art exhibit across, you know what I'm saying, yeah. the UK and Europe and and just be out there for a minute and prepare it. So I don't have to bring everything. I can just make the stuff there. Right. I mean, that's so that's what really, I'm saying. That's where your painting falls in. Yeah. <laughs> a, a freshly newly made one for me. Um, yeah. I'll take it. That's um, what's up. But yeah, going back to, you know, how this affected you. So personally, you've been, you know, how have you been mentally? Is there anything with your, which, or physically with your health that you've been doing different, that you have the time to do so, not only to do things that you've always wanted to do, but working on yourself? Because that's been a, um, a red line through my, through my talks. That's, that's mm -hmm. the first thing touring artists say, hey, I finally have the time to sit down. Yeah, 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 that's true. And just, you know, just like uh, as far as workout, just like trying to like increase the things that I, that I used to do to try to keep myself healthy because as as unhealthy as touring was, is is a certain regimen that I was doing on the road that just kept me like moving like crazy that I noticed right. uh, I was not doing that, that I'm at home. So I had to just, you know, jump on my bike, ride, you know, just give, increase my cardio and things of that nature to actually feel like I've been, you know, like a regular person right, <laughs> for, right. for sure. Um, and I, and I, um, I think my, me having the outlet to paint has been a saving grace for me. It really yeah, has. It's been something imagine. that, you know, so that's kept, kept me, you know, sane. So just as long as everybody around me is like, you know, my uh, loved ones, close to loved ones and everybody, um, is healthy and, and, you know, are not like hurting for any kind of money or, or food or anything like that. I, I'm okay, but I know that there are millions of people yeah. out there that are not in the position that I am, and I, I I feel for them. And you know, any situation I can to help that, I'm right. trying to. You know, so. And so professionally, you said you had the chance to do uh, some shows last weekend. How's right. that been since since March, though? Wow. Well, I mean, and and the, okay. First of all, um, I did two songs with this band called slightly stupid this band from san diego right. that are like huge out here right so um uh, it's cool for them big up to them to just be like hey man come do those songs with us i'm like word i get to stretch my legs so, oh, that's so cool. you were basically just a guest artist on oh, just a on guest their shows. okay yeah but but um it just felt amazing i was like oh <laughs> dude i didn't think i was gonna miss it this like much. a fish back in the water yes ma'am i didn't <laughs> want to say it thank you for saying it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it really felt great. It felt it felt amazing, and it also like um, it 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 was a um, an eye opening lesson as far as how we could pull this off again if everything doesn't return back totally to normal. You understand right. what I mean? So that's the part that I was really like trying to pay attention to, like uh, so to to, to describe the spot instead of performing inside of a, these guys do arenas, right? So they like 5,000 people or whatever. So instead of uh, performing inside of the arena, they set the stage up in the middle of the parking right. lot, right? And then they had, instead of the cars like parking in line, like they do, you know, in, in, in queues, right? They did it in a round. So the right. cars parked around like yeah, that. Yeah. And then you have big L LED uh, uh, um, screens. screens around yeah. the whole stage. So it was perfect. Like everybody could see. Yeah. Everybody could hear, and if you couldn't hear, you could turn your radio to a right. certain station. Yeah, it was. I was like, "This is it, they've been whoever's they, they're thinking like That's it's what really been thought doing out. out here. They've been doing drive-in shows over here where you can just come in with the car." Yeah. And there's a big stage set up, and, um, and yeah, that's that's how they've been doing it. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's cool. Been. It's it's a cool experience. Now I don't know how long that's gonna last. Yeah, but it's a cool experience. It costs it really a lot too because you have to think about the production that comes into this. Yeah. Um, I got I got to shout out Crazy Legs uh, <laughs> coming. Legs in is on there. What? Yeah, he's shouting us out, and he's talking Max about respect, uh, driving man. events going to lead to a lot of pregnancies. Um, I also yeah. would imagine that they would <laughs> that they would lead to a lot of accidents because if people bring their own alcohol and drive back home. Who yeah. knows, you know? Yeah. So I, I would just imagine it. just keeping it simple, like um insurance policies. You know, what I mean, you know how they um 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 venues have to take insurance out, you know, just in case accidents happen. Like imagine 
the how right. how how much the insurance will be when you got to pull in cars and everything. It's be I know, right? So. But yeah, so, crazy. do you see yourself doing a show like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, if 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 it turns into this, yeah. But the 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 drawback, like you said, is that it's expensive. Yeah, it's and really it's, expensive. It's it's gonna be something that's that that the you know uh, the promoters who <laughs> are gonna. They gonna figure out a way to make well, a buck. So the ones that I've seen do it so far are pretty big artists that are signed with uh, labels that probably back that up right. for right. whatever releases. I mean, I have uh, one of my good friends. Her son is one of the the biggest known rappers out here now, and he's going to do his release show in that same manner. But right. I'm sure that the label is setting up the whole stage and the production for that. So I guess yeah. that makes it easier. But for independent artists it's a whole different different story like mm -hmm. how do you feel like how do you feel independent artists can stay relevant and get an income stream nowadays mm. that's a good question that's a real good question and um to you don't be have honest to answer, but... i don't have the answer because i was <laughs> going to say the same way that um that that um, the, the music industry kind of slowly is working itself out by like doing streaming now when they yeah. didn't know how to what to yeah. do when everything went to play. It's, I think it's going to work itself out like that, but I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm really kind of one of those guys in the background. Going, <sighs> I'm just happy that, that I'm, I'm a, 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 a artist all around as opposed to just being this one perspective of thing. Cause right. I think that's, like, that's yeah, something that, that is good for you because you have different types of, areas where you can you know do something or you can do yeah. cross promoting or you know uh, whatever cross collaborations with whoever and so if somebody's only you know doing music or only doing art or whatever it is they're gonna have to come up with a way well i would say come up with a way that you can keep doing if things come back to normal and you can do it next to whatever is the normal or what used to be the normal mm -hmm. um to do so but it's been it's been pretty interesting to see who comes up with what type of solutions. Yeah, exactly. I guess the number one, the number one priority is for everything to be safe. Right. You know, so, so God willing, it, that's the, the biggest thing of it all. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's really cool to see so many of these real um, innovative ideas. Yeah. On how they do, you know, you're like, whoa, damn, I wouldn't have never thought of that. You know what I mean? So right. I did but like a live also, little video walking through the, the parking lot. Like, look at this. Is this, this what this turned to, right. you know? So, yeah. But but I also want to address for everyone that's tuned in or will be watching this that people should, especially creative people, should not feel pressured to have to do something. Because first and foremost, you have to make sure that you're okay, no matter what your situation is, uh, mentally, physically, and not feel guilty about not doing anything. Because sure. everybody processes what's going on in the world different. And we all don't have to be the most innovative and creative people with solutions. I mean, okay. you can look towards others. And when you're ready, you can get into what you think is best for you. Because everybody's like, well, put out music. And then some people don't even feel like putting out music or creating at this point. Right. Ain't inspired to do it. Yeah, I know right. what you mean. And then yeah. Yeah. they don't want to be judged because everybody's doing something. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like if... It, if you don't feel like doing it, don't do it. Just make yeah. sure that you're okay, whether it be financial. Don't, don't throw in the towel because you, you, you're you depressed. That's Then make sure that you're mentally okay first. Yeah, um, that's real. You're totally right about that, for real. Like I said, safety and health is all first before right. any of this. I mean, you know, it's the truth, you know, so. Because this world is going to pot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, what's cool is like, like you said, it's like time sitting here. Um, have a lot of people thinking more than anything and some people can get lost in their thoughts some people can get right. pushed by what they're looking at on their phones and all of that stuff and like you said don't do nothing that's gonna make you feel um unhealthy you know what i mean right. it's gonna make you you know what i'm saying go crazy and feel pressure to do something that's gonna take you out of your element or out yourself and make you yeah. sick you know that's for real so yeah yeah, Yo, pick up all this you know, love, too. It's a lot of love on this page. I'm I know. Thanks for like, yeah. tuning <laughs> Thank in. You guys. Like, yeah, I appreciate everyone um, tuning in right now. I hope yeah. everyone is healthy and safe. Um, but, yeah, also make sure you check in with other people if, you know, if anything, or 
have people to talk to. But then also, this is the time to connect to other artists or creatives or whatever your, your, your job or your industry is. Because sure, this is mainly focused on creative people, but it really applies to everyone, no matter what your job is. You can have a nine to five and still deal with the same situation. Um, so, you know, make sure that you have your network, that you can rely on other people, whether it's um, working together towards a solution or whether it is creating new things together to keep busy and to stay motivated. Um, yeah, don't do it alone because we're all exactly. here. And then it's, it's easier because everybody has time. Everybody's home. So you can hit up your favorite artist and uh, say, hey, I'll work <laughs> with you. I'm not saying you're going to reply, but hey, you know, if you don't try. <laughs> Somebody said the same thing to me. It was like, dude. Uh, uh, I think it was me and Cut. We was talking about working on, working with somebody. I ain't gonna say who that person is just yet. Hopefully they say yes. But he was <laughs> like, man, I was I was like, man, I don't got no no ends on that person. I don't know nobody who even know that person's number. He was like, man, well you know they at home. You should send them up on like right. Instagram. I said oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's true. But yeah, but a lot of people are, are using this time. Why, I'm sorry. Well, it's also why I feel like nobody should say no to me if I ask them to be on an hour, <laughs> you know, out of their day on my live. I, I mean, mean you know. come on now, you know, what else you got to do? <laughs> Unless you're moving and shaking like P. Diddy or something, you got things lined even up. Then, you know? <laughs> even then, you got an hour to motivate the rest of the world and shake and move the rest of the world. Yeah. So, but it's Yo, okay. I want to, I want to big up one of my brothers, man. Big Donnell Smokes in the house, man. He, I'm just seeing this guy has been, behind the scenes with us from day one since I lived. Oh, wow. Since, yeah, since, since my son was like two years old. That's my brother from wow. another mother. He's just on the page now. I'm just seeing the pop up. So big up. Has he right been here? here? Uh, I don't know. Smokes, have you ever been to Amsterdam? I don't know. If it, well, not I'm not you. sure. <laughs> no, no, he never been with me. You know, right. you met him. <laughs> I have not been. Anyway, yeah, yeah, long yeah. story. Um, yeah, I see a lot of my people in here, so I'm sorry if I'm not shouting you out. I see you come by. Uh, again, the questions, if you have questions or, you know, if you want to say something, put them in the question box. We'll get to that. I see, I see some already piling up. We will get to that. Um, you know, talking about the pandemic and, and solutions, uh, in short, how has the whole protesting, the Black Lives Matter, um, Trump situation affected you? Well, I mean, uh, sad to say, but this is uh, a bigger manifestation of the exact same thing. If anybody has ever been a fan of, of my music or any of the groups that I've been connected to, you um, have been privy to the the same shit that's, that you're seeing on TV and on CNN now. You've right. been privy to me talking about it. You've been privy to any of the rappers from my generation you know what I'm saying? In my right. era and my, you know, status and stature have been talking about this forever. And so um, our protest has definitely been through our art. Um, a lot of us have gotten out in the street and, and, and you know what I'm saying, stood next to those that are uh, protesting on, on foot and everything as well. But um, it's a trip to, you know, see the signs of these things coming, to see certain situations pop up that lead to that 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 uh that are are arrows that point towards where we are right now to have right. been speaking on these things for years and years i mean i've been recording professionally for 20 some odd years yeah and to be speaking on that type of stuff from day one yeah till now um is kind of it, it's surreal it's yeah. scary it's uh it's it's frightening but it's it's uh but it must it's, it must feel it's, good as well. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's yeah. comforting at the same time because people now are saying, right. oh, I get it. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's sad that it's still relevant, but yeah. it's good that you can show throughout history this has been a thing. Yeah. This is not new. So let's, let's take it all back to all, but like you said, all the rappers from that era, everybody back then with, with whatever message um, mm -hmm. about social injustice is now 20, 30, hell, 40 years later still relevant. Exactly. I mean, my grandmother showed me a picture of her aunt. My grandmother was born in 33. Her aunt, there's a picture in 1921. It was three of her 
friends. They was all, you know, black ladies, you know what I'm saying, all kind of dressed up coming from church. But I think they was at this protest and they were holding the sign that said, stop police brutality. This is in 1921. That gave me goosebumps. Yeah, that gave me goosebumps. When I saw that, I was like, it's crazy how this stuff hasn't that's changed. That's a whole century and, ago. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's the part that, that scares me. Yeah. But, but the conversations are being had uh, amongst the people who these conversations need to be had. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And but that's the also, part that I'm enjoying. People, you know? What people have to understand is that, yes, we are now on the verge of some type of, I don't want to say breakthrough, but yeah. a shift maybe. And then... You know, we have to understand that that shift is not going to make the change go overnight. We probably won't see it in our lifetimes, maybe our children. But this is something that is that is now it's it's gradual. Even from 100 years ago, maybe the change goes a little faster than the past 100 years, but it's not going overnight. So we have to keep going. But then having to deal with the pandemic, I was talking to Tore as well. You know, he said, I'm staying in. I've been protesting all these years. I can't be out there risking my health and my family protesting on the street. And I don't feel some type of way because everybody who knows me knows I've been, you know, uh, active in this in this subject. So Exactly. And that's the point I'm trying to make. I mean, Torre is right on point when he said that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like we've been saying these things. For instance, I have a song that I just put out again, right? It's called yeah, Control yeah. Coincidence 2020. I put that I wrote that song ten and a half years ago, around the time when Bush was talking that weapons of mass destruction bullshit. Right. right? And and I, it was in protest of that and how easily the masses are fooled by what they see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So I, I gave a list. I'm, uh, this year marks the 10th anniversary of my, my solo album, Fish Out of Water. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put out four songs. Yeah, it's been long. Wow. So I said, I'll put out four songs that, you know, are, are songs that I thought should have gotten light on, on the album and Control Coincidence right. was one of them. So I put that, put that out. We redid the tunes, remixed them, made them nice. But anyway, Upon listening to that song, I was I I just was I went in a little tear mode because I was like, how is it that I'm speaking these things? I'm I don't claim I'm no prophet or I'm no right. you know soothsayer, no you know what I'm saying. But how am I saying some stuff like this? And these things are still here, even in the course. It says no, no matter whether it's right or wrong, it's still going on. This is what the course says. It scares me. So yeah. things like that throughout, you know, I, it made me start going through my, my catalog and going, man, man, wow, uh, dang, damn. Well, this so, you know. this is a testament to your to your work really being timeless. Thank you. Unfortunately, that. but also fortunately. So, yeah. you know, subject wise, unfortunately, but music wise, fortunately. Yeah, um, right. I appreciate that. Frank. Thanks for putting a, 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 a positive light on such a negative subject. That's real. Thank you. No, but we, I mean, this is what we have to do in these times. Yeah. Like you said, the balance needs to be there. We can all focus yeah. on the negative, but there's a lot of positive as well. And and I don't want to put anything about this past year down, 2020, because people have been having a rough time. People are still dealing with things and processing things and, and not knowing when the end is, is near. But for me personally, despite all of the things that are going on it's been an, an amazing blessed year and i'm yeah. i'm grateful that i'm able to say that and i hope that with with the positivity that i got out of this year that i can spread it a little bit um, uh, through this live or any in any way else i can do so you know just to keep the balance there yeah and right. i've been affected <laughs> as well i just you know try to focus on the positive <laughs> yeah see that's what's cool about us creators is like you know we channel our uh pain and, and the things that yeah. you know make us you know like uh instead of you know watering that plant and growing the the, the pain that we you know feeling we change right. it into something positive and that's what this show is and that's Thank why i'm you. proud of you, <laughs> well, you well you know having talked about what's going on in the world and how you're dealing with it and uh you know your your feedback and thoughts on that i want to go into you as the artist uh okay. i met you it was during a cannabis cup uh situation over here and uh, for those who don't know cannabis cup is a festival where you know 
where there's a lot of cannabis. Uh, so there's, there's a shows, lot of cannabis. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of smoking and there's a lot of partying and, and, and chilling. And uh, you were performing and I met you back then. Um, I knew who you were, but I hadn't met you personally. So, you know, I knew the, the music from before Jurassic Five and them, but I hadn't met you before. So I met you and I thought you were great. We've been friends ever since. We hang out every time you're here. Um, but what I want to know now, because I did do an interview with you, but this is all kind of like, you know, in a new, new form. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what was for you the first time that you felt that you were successful with your music, where mm. you really thought, hey, this is something I'm going to be doing for a living. I'm not having a nine to five or whatever other job. Man, there's so many instances. If you got a little time, I'll tell you a couple of them. Okay. No, you have five minutes to answer this question because I have more <laughs> questions. Okay, okay. So this one, I'm, I'm going to tell you this one significant one. Okay, yes. I was a security guard uh, around the time that my oh son my God, was... Oh, my God, you'd be so good as a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, man, move over, you know, whatever. But I was a security guard. And what was cool was the dude, the security guard company that I worked for, uh, the my boss was uh, uh, one of my high school friends from years, so it was cool. You know what I mean? So that 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 part was cool. But I, I was a security guard, and I was working um, um, maybe four days a week while I was doing Jurassic Five work, and I was doing Ozo Motley work as well. Like all this stuff was still underground. Right. You know, certain things was bubbling for Jurassic a little bit, but I still needed to keep a nine to five to feed my, my, my son and everything. So we, you know, but everything was bubbling. It was just all this bubbling. I was just like, kind of like getting no sleep and this, that, and third. But I always said to myself, if I could just, you know, do what I want, I'm not a, uh, a, uh, uh, an extravagant guy. I'm not luxurious. I don't need all this jewelry. I don't need supercars. I don't need none of that stuff. You just need I just, your weed. You know, need a little herb and just a little bit of good, a good time and just be comfortable. I don't, if I don't have to worry about where my, my next meal is coming from and my right. family is comfortable, then that to me is success. Has always been, yeah. I guess, that way. So anyway, so I was having this conversation with my friend, one of my first cell phones I had. I was on a gig where we were securing this, uh, this carnival way out, like way outside of LA. It's a place called Saugus. We was way out there, right? So it's like two hours from LA. We out there securing this carnival and this and the third. And I told my friend, I said, okay, look, man, these gigs with Ozo Motley in Los Angeles and the gigs that I've been doing with Jurassic um, popping up here and there, if they start to equate the exact same or more mm -hmm. than the check that I'm getting from you. Right. I'm out. Then I'm I'm gonna have to leave. Ain't no disrespect, yeah. man, but I'm gonna have to leave, right? So, around yeah. that same time, I'm seeing. We see we did that carnival. I think three days in a row. So it was a weekend carnival. Um. So the second day, I told him that the first day. The second day, I get a call from Will Dog from Ozo Motley, saying that Santana wanted us to go on tour with him. <laughs> I was wow. like. Yeah. Uh, yo, L, uh, I quit, man. I love you, but I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Peace. That must have been the best feeling. That must yeah, it was amazing. Feeling. It really was. It really was. And that, that made me say, okay, if I can do this kind of thing for a living, right. then I'm with it. Right. So I've had a lot of conversations with um, artists, uh, people in the industry, about um, learning how to navigate in this industry, uh, what to do, what not to do, how to uh, navigate your career the best way, especially as mm. an independent artist. Um, what would you say was your biggest mistake that turned out to be your biggest lesson in this music industry? Some people have said, I didn't read contracts. Other people said, I had the wrong manager or the wrong team, um, or I, I approached somebody wrong or whatever. What do you think was for you a very significant lesson? Um, I would honestly say the biggest lesson for me uh, is, um, <laughs> I, me personally, I am a very personable type of guy. I'm all about people. I'm all about helping uh, people say that my, I got a mother's sign. I'm a cancer. I'm a stomach child. So I like, I like to make sure everything yeah. and everybody around me is okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I, I have a habit of becoming friends with people that I work with faster than the work is produced sometimes. Um, <laughs> you chilling more than working. 
Yeah, well, not necessarily chilling more than working, but just for me, like I put my trust and loyalty and faith uh, in people the same as I would want them to do for me. And sometimes I don't get that in return. Right. And I and and I ha I'm so sensitive about that that I've been really heartbroken in a lot of different instances as I far as friendships that. is concerned. So that but that in itself made me um it it put uh a fence around my heart, so to speak, you know. Uh it made me watch Moore's a saying in Jamaica, watch what you say instead of saying what you watch. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It made me do that more than than anything. And it it made me just be more mindful of who I give my heart to. You know what I mean? And that that made me clear the path so that I could see business better. I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Because yeah. I started to, you know, I just, I don't know. I, it was hard for me to separate the friendship and the business aspect right. a lot of the times. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because, first of all, me knowing you personally very well, I definitely see that with you. And then me, our birthdays being a week apart, yeah, 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 I am the same way. Yeah, I am the same damn way, and I had mm -hmm. to learn that as well because I've been just like you, heartbroken in many times, in many ways. Where I had, to, and I still sometimes, you know, go more to that personal side than the business side, and then I have to check myself, or or something happens that makes me feel like, see, you shouldn't mm -hmm. have done it. But, but you're doing it from your heart, right? And, and and so one thing my pops used to say is like. When you fight monsters, never become a monster yourself. It's hard right. to not become a monster. Oh, I you know? tried. So just... <laughs> you know what I said? I'm going to be a hard, cold, you know, a uh, bitch. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. And, and I tried, but it's just not in me. I am not that person. I don't want to be that person. Even to protect myself, I can't be that person. Yeah. So I'm just going to take the, the risks where I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm making the the assessment, like, okay, I'll take this risk. And if I get hurt, then, then I know that I'm going to go into it knowing that there's a risk that I'm going to get fucked over or whatever you want to call it. Right. right. And it, it's a more conscious decision now, other than just going straight off of feeling. Yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, the We're older, older you get, now. Yeah. yeah the older, older you get, the more experience <laughs> you have and the more you, you can read people better or their intentions, I would yeah. hope. But, um, I mean, you know, sometimes you, sometimes, you can read a person and then sometimes their mask is extremely deceiving yes. and you just, they get past you, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, but just once again, it's, it's don't, don't change who you are because of that is the lesson that I've learned. I'm like, I can't, you know, even if I'm going to get hurt again, right. I'm not going to change. We are really the I same am. when it comes to that. <laughs> that's probably why we're friends. Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> so I'm going to take a few questions because people have been like so patient with us. Um, okay. Here comes one from Josby. What are your biggest influences in hip hop? And I can add to that maybe who? Mm. Um, well, what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna talk about the what. The what is my, is my biggest influence in hip hop? The, the, uh, the element of graffiti. Graph writing has, is what introduced me to the culture. Um, it brought me in. It gave me the confidence to try every other thing to find out that I could actually rap too. You know what I'm saying? But right. graffiti is what, what, you know, is my biggest influence in hip hop people. Oh, wow. It, it's a long list of that. Um, I mean, name a few. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you know, let's go, you know, cool hurt and, and flash and, 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 and right. uh, Mel and grandmaster cash. Big up the to legends, all my OGs for sure. Yeah. Big up Founders. to LL Cool J. Big up to Run and D. Yeah. DMC is one of my man. I, I he don't even understand how much I look up to that dude. You know what I mean? Uh, and then in in you know in my era, it's like man, the dilated peoples, the the the, the beat junkies, the, the you know what I'm saying all yeah. of my peoples on the West Coast, yeah, all yeah, my people yeah. on the East Coast, the, the, folks, the company the flows folks. and the yeah everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Big up to Exhibit who just popped up on, on on the thing. Big up to the the licks and everybody. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's, it just goes on and on. You know you know we. To, I have to do <laughs> give a shout out to uh rocker because he's the one that introduced me to you yeah yeah i was gonna say big up the yeah. big rocker artist science 
That's what's up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the big homie. So um, he was actually uh, commenting on um, on my promotion about our talk. So I actually should ask him to get on here as well. But he's so busy. Everybody's busy. He's one of those people that stay busy. I'll ask him. Yeah, he's plugged into <laughs> you guys over there too now. He got like a cool little connection over there. I now. know. Like, he's been, you know what? Cool. He called me about that. I might, we were supposed to do some stuff, but we'll, you know, that's a whole other story. Um, let me go into more uh, questions. Um, okay, somebody says biggest regrets. Well, I think I can chalk that up to what you just said about people. Yeah. Um, Oh. And let me see. There's more. Um, oh, this is nice. Martin DZH. Don't have a question, but want to wish you and Charlie all the best. Stay safe. That's nice. Thank you. Big up, Martin. Appreciate, Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Then we have um, Satellite Hip Hop. Charlie, who do, you, who do you think tours more in hip hop? You or Quali? Wow. I mean, you know, I, it's funny, man, because me and Quali are crashing. <laughs> we'll crash into each other on the road. Like, like in different cities. We'll be like, yo, what up, fam? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So. I could not tell you. I think Kwali probably has a, a more of an extensive uh, solo career outside of his group, which is, you know, Blackstar, which people know of. So I think he probably tours a little more. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't if know. I have to look at it from my perspective. Well, I'm maybe I'm I'm kind of like uh, not looking at it from a good angle because I look at it from an Amsterdam point of view. But you've been here more than <laughs> than he has. But that'd be my choice know. too. Come on, Pat. You know I come out there and be like I ain't got nothing to yeah, do. Yeah, but with that, you. I, know, I know it's not just shows, but I mean he ain't got that many shows out here either. So you know, yeah. well he's definitely not chilling with me when he comes out here. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, no. He's not special. No. I'm just <laughs> um. Okay. So more questions. Oh, Lord. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry, Mr. Mac Mac. I don't know if I want to ask this question right now. I might circle back to that. Uh, old School Crates. Uh, big ups to you. What year did you first get introduced into hip hop culture? A year. Uh, He's asking for a specific year. Now we really want to know your age. Here we go. The year was 19. If I say 19 anything, I mean, that's old, right? Yeah, that's old. <laughs> no, but uh, I think, honestly, uh, the year that Rapper's Delight came out was the uh, unofficial year that I got touched by what would I, I would learn later was hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So 79. 1979. Yeah, I was about to say. Because around that same time in Chicago, I was living in Chicago and, and uh, it was a blizzard that, that like snow, like five feet of snow straight. And everybody was like trapped in the house like we right. are with these pandemic things. It was crazy. So, But I remember listening to that song over and over and over and over. And that was my first like initial introduction to it but uh almost a year and a half later like at the end of 80 almost 81 around the time my, my little brother was born and he he was he moved from the bronx his name was dave and he was just telling me about all of the little elements and everything that that was going on in his neighborhood and this and i'm in chicago like eh, fuck out of here whatever they don't sound right. like until i seen the stuff on tv it was a program right. Uh, called That's Incredible, and they were talking about it, and I was like, damn, this is what Dave was talking about. Let me go holler at him and see, you know what I'm saying? So right. that was my initial, like, really, like, introduction into the subculture, the the secret society, right. which is hip-hop, you know what I mean? For real, though. Right. And so I just saw somebody making a remark about I look young. I'm actually from 78. I was one years old when Rapper's Delight came out. Uh, hey, pretty is is all outdoors. All the fellas out there who think she is, please sign off. She throw a heart, something. Let let me know because I feel the same way. Yeah, she's gorgeous. It is what it is. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you. Uh, it's my Asian genes. I still look. Hey, young, but, there you go. <laughs> but I'm old. I'm old. Yeah. I've, I've been around the block. Yeah. Um, okay, here's another good question. People, I see you putting questions in the comment boxes. Please put it in the question box. It's it's a lot better. Um, oh, Rashawn, the homie Rashawn Will, uh, big ups to him. He asks, what is your favorite verse you ever wrote? That's a good question. Oh, um. That's hard, mm. though, for, to ask that to a. He said verse, huh? Damn. Yeah. First, my favorite verse I ever wrote. And shut up, Rashawn. I'm not in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> but you could get to either. I would say. I honestly, don't get carded anymore in the, in the States, though. So that ship has uh, sailed. I do. <laughs> 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 no, 
Now, I think uh, my favorite verse, one of my favorite verses, because there's a lot of them, man. But uh, in in the in the Jurassic era was uh, the, the my verse in contribution to life. I I, I really feel like that was uh, I I felt like I got something really grown man off my chest because I was I was a new father around that time. So I was just like, yo, you know, like you know, miss me if you ain't trying to take care of your kid. Right. <laughs> kind of right, feeling, right, you know what right. I mean? So so I, that that verse came out of that. Um. Uh, oh, okay. In in like my solo career, like uh, say, let's say off a of fish out of water, um, verses is the song "Righteous Way," man, because that song is built like uh, one of those babushka dolls, where it's like the right. the mom, and then you open it, and then it's the little one, and then the next one, you know. Right. I was trying to convey that idea with my my dad, then open it, and then it's me, and then you open it, and then it's my son, yeah. kind of. So that to me, that's yeah, one of my so. favorite tunes. You know what I mean? For for sure, yeah. All right, I'll take a few more questions. Uh, oh, and Righteous Way, we just, that was one of the songs we remixed and we're going to put it out later on this year. So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to my own questions, actually, because I'm looking at the time. Um, okay. You've worked with a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people. If, if you don't know, go look it up. My question is, having worked with so many uh, great artists and producers and whoever, are there still people on your bucket list that you would really want to work with in this lifetime. Oh man, yeah, it's so many dope people that just keep coming out Can too. You, you know what I mean? Like, um, okay, it's these two girls coming straight out of Seattle. Right, they call Blimes and Gab. They call Bag. If you don't know who they are, check them out. These two girls. One, they down to earth as hell. I love, I love anybody who is who they are. You know, like whether you're right. on stage or off. This is these two girls. They're, who they are. The queens like a mug, right? Uh um they can rap their asses off. Like they can rap. Like <laughs> like you know how like rappers be like rappers be like, you know, big judges of other rappers, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. These, these girls can rap. And then they can sing too, so it's really cool, right? Then their message is just it's not like over the top. It's but it's not like I can't explain it. They just, they just so to me, they're my favorite thing going right now. They're called Bag, Blinds, yeah, and Gab. Just, uh, yeah, Trump's just, one just posted it. Thank you or commented yeah. it. Um, who else? Uh, man, you know I'm, I'm a Kendrick fan to the max. I can't wait uh -huh. for his next thing to come out to the max. You know, Kung Fu Kenny is my yeah. dude. Um, uh, I I'm love to get him on my live. <laughs> that'd be dope. I love some J Cole. Did you already have Rom on your on your live yet? Did Ron, Romney Malco, did he come no, on your he thing? ain't responding to my messages. Nah, Buster, He's anyway. busy with all his, his new stuff, because, you know, yeah. he, ever since he got busy with the new show and his, his website, he's just been ignoring me. Just when you get him, when you finally get him on, talk about his rap career, man. They, I know. Don't nobody this, talk about his rap this career. Is why, listen, <laughs> you, you and I were in a record store. We were in um, Waxwell, uh -huh, I think uh -huh. it was. When you saw that that record and and I posted about it and he ever since then me and him been friends. Nice. So um, nice. Yeah. yeah, that's my dude right there. Yeah, he's and and he just got he dropped his movie, so that's why he's also been so busy. I was supposed to be in the movie, but that didn't happen because I was there and then he wasn't shooting and then I had to go to L.A. But I don't know, it was yeah. just a whole thing. But his his own uh, independent movie, Prison Logic, is out now. Mm. Um, so go sure. watch it. But oh, no, Romney uh, hasn't uh, been on my life yet. You can hit him up and t tell him that he needs to respond to my messages. Yeah, man, that dude. That's my dude. I'm just proud of his, his movements, man. He just, you know, he. Yeah, I always great. knew he was going to be, you know, big. And it's beautiful that he is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's really he's really awesome. Um, he's always been amazing. And his brother, too. His brother is a dancer um, nice. in, in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And we stopped by there as well. And it was just, yeah, it was amazing to see a show that he had uh, produced for the kids and whatnot. It was, yeah, it was great. Oh, one other person that I wanted to big up um, on a music tip that's that's out of Chicago. Her name is Ange13. So A-N-G-1-3, right? It spells Ange13, Ange. okay. She is another one. Can wrap her ass off. But, I, you know, <laughs> that's my whole girl. So, yeah, big up to her. Good. Too. Anyway. All right, we got, we got enough of that. Um, okay, what new music? Well, you just recommended new music to us mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of questions about the uk now i know you've worked with people in the uk before you've been there and so um what festivals 
are your favorite festivals in the UK? And, and who are some people that you were checking for now? Or are there people in the UK that you're checking yeah. for? And this is for the UK people tuned in. Um, Glastonbury. Definitely. Yeah, Glastonbury, always. Always. Uh, uh, and uh, Boomtown has been has been really a shockingly, you know, it coming in yeah, second yeah. hard. Boomtown is amazing. I was like, wow, this is nuts. This is a crazy place. Um, uh, the UK uh, is the the mother of those type of situations as far as right. festivals is concerned. So, you know, they, they got it locked and they figured it, they got it figured out. So I would say uh, Glastonbury, Boomtown, uh, what was the, the third one? Maybe Shindig was dope, but I, I can't say that was the, the third best one. Uh, uh, it's one other than I'm not remembering right now. Uh, it's killing me. It's killing me. It'll come. Uh, no uh, worries. Shambhala. The Shambhala okay. Festival. Well, Shambhala. That's how they say Shambhala. Shambhala. So for, <laughs> for the UK people tuned in and for everybody else as well, um, next Monday, the 26th, I'm actually having a guest from the UK called Genesis Elijah. He's a rapper. Mm -hmm. And so we will be talking as well because I'm, you know, moving around and, in the UK, I was just telling people I just got back from London last night. So, um, yeah. Uh, That's what's up. UK is definitely on my radar as well because there's mad talent out there. Dude, those dudes are, I, hey, for real. Like, I feel like, you know, they took the, the baton and they run it with it. You know what I'm saying? Big yeah. up to people like uh, yeah. Eva Lazarus and like, uh, even in like the grime area. Some of them dudes, they're rap. Like, I'm like, yo, these dudes are crazy. So, yep. you know. You know. The Kano's and them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what's that old school dude? What's his name? Skibbity. That dude's hard. <laughs> He's hard. He's hard. Well, I'm trying to get the UK scene up, up on here as well. I can't forget about those. Honestly, it's about anybody who's talented. I've had people from all over the world. Um, uh, it just depends on the, the level of inspiration and motivation I see fit for this, for this uh, show. Exactly. Um, let me go through a few more questions. So, do you are very popular? Um, Emma, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, there's so many questions. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so if people want to work with you, how do they go about that? Do you get more um, people hitting you up now during the pandemic for collaborations or? Yeah, yeah, I get more people hit me up because people are home. You know, what I'm saying for sure. So it, that's cool. Um, I have done so many collaborations in my lifetime for so many different reasons uh, outside of just wanting to create some stuff that nowadays I'm really looking to, if I do something, I want it to be dope where right. when I walk away from it, it's going to live when I ain't living no more, that kind of thing. So that's really what I'm looking for at this point. Um, somebody told me, well, I said this in a lyric because somebody said it to me and I thought it was like, it's funny as hell. I said, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm known to have more cameos than a clan of Larry Blackmans. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, I see the question. But um, if you want to get in contact with me on that, um, um, charlietuna at charlietuna.com. That's me. I'm trying to see something popped in, but these questions here are not on, in order. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so <laughs> when I was talking to Eric, I asked him if you would produce an album for me and he would because you know uh for for the people that want to know I once in many many moons ago I used to rap I was on a tour here whatever uh not rapping not trying to rap but it would be fun to do an album with Eric Sermon Beats right um but I think you and I will never do a collaboration because you only want to do things that are dope <laughs> no now see you me you and Eric Sermon would be dope don't say, All right, come you can on, feature on, you know on my dope. track from Eric, then. Hey, come on. I'll help you out. We can make that. We can make it dope. Think about that. Well, yeah, because he you says it doesn't matter if you're whack, because I'll just do it because it's you. That That's not good enough, man. I'm not whack. I mean, I'm man, not great, it, but I'm not whack either. Yeah, and his beats ain't whack either. So, you right. know what I'm saying? I, so and I wouldn't come. I try my hardest not to come whack, so we'll be all right. You know? I know, right? <laughs> and even if it's just for fun, then we did that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. You you got me. Don't even trip. It's all good. Just call me. Yeah. Right. All right. I, I'm gonna hold you to that. This is why I do these things on live. So I got it like you know it's locked in. Like come on now, you like, said that. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I got I got witnesses here. Um, no, nah, this is this is for somewhere in the future when I feel like doing that. Um, this is not uh, something that's on my priority list, but it would be fun to do so. Um, we're getting to the end of this talk. Uh, I want to ask you. 
what are some of the uh, advices or, or mottos or mantras that you can give out to those who are watching now in these times that we're living in? Uh, well, equality is key. You know what I mean? And, and, it, and it is true. I bleed the same as you. I breathe the same as you. I eat and drink the same as you. So in that instance, there is uh, uh, lessons to be learned from things that separate us and not uh, not um, fences to be built because of things that separate us, if you understand what I'm saying. So right. I feel like the only way we could get over any of these problems that are invisible problems that we can't touch, but we feel the effects of like racism and things of that nature, right? Is, is equality, is to understand the next man's plight, is to respect the next man's uh, 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 right to right. live, to breathe, to to do the same things as you. There's a saying in Islam, want for your brother what you would want for yourself. Simple. Yeah. It's simple. So, Definitely. Yeah. Well, I want to, first of all, thank everyone that is in here. I'm sorry I didn't get to all the questions. Um, I wanted the conversation to flow, so I can't, I don't, I want it to kind of fit. So uh, a lot of the questions, I'm sure you can ask him in a DM or anything. Yeah, and, hit me uh, up, y'all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thank you for, uh, thank you, thank you, Charlie, for wanting to do this and for being a guest and for being a role model in this industry who is still here, who is still doing his thing, who's still smiling and who is still rubbing off on everybody else with your positive energy and your, your creations. <laughs> I appreciate you, Faye. Thank you for sticking to your guns, girl, because you was good at this, in, you know, <laughs> decades ago, and you better at it now, man. So keep it going, man, for real. Man. Anything you need from me, just holler. You know Thank you. you. And I so will tell people that don't know me, yes, I've been a music journalist for like 20 years now. You know what I'm saying? And, people don't, hey, you know, and man, I'm that's never, decades. I'm never <laughs> getting paid for this. I've only been doing this because of the sole passion I have for spreading information and spreading the arts. So, Trust me, you, you know, will I don't, be rewarded. I'm not going to put a, a, a cash app or anything, but just support <laughs> me by sharing these these lives and tuning in where you can. That's right. Uh, hey, also, before I leave, I want to just big up Mr. Cut Chemist, okay? Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, me and Cut Chemist have been working on, in this pandemic, we have been working on an album together, it, me and him, and we got some cool shit that y'all want to hear. So, God willing, you know what I'm saying, keep oh, so you on the lookout. That's, that's new music. Yeah, that's coming out people soon. People have been asking about new music. People have been asking yeah. about new J5 albums and stuff. So, what is, what is some other new stuff that we can expect from you? Well, me and Cut Chemist are doing that. Um, uh, I'm going to start working on is my plan. We, if this works, we're already three songs deep. I'm going to do a, a project with the next man. Um, you know, big up to my man, Crafty Cuts, uh, for all of the work that we've done for the past three, four years. And um, let me see, what else am I doing? I got a project uh, in my pocket with uh, with uh, Mad Lib's uh, little brother, Ono. And oh, I'm hoping no, to yeah, yeah big up to Ono. Oh, and I'm hoping to involve the House of Vibe, my, my, my band that I travel with, big up to Bruce Star and all them, in, in oh all of that, God, too. So, yeah. You know what? I missed them when I was in L.A. last year, and you were gone. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Traveling. Yeah, traveling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, my God, you got a lot coming up. A lot, yeah. you know, so. It's trying to work, trying to keep it going, good, because yeah. I'm telling you, I go crazy if I don't, you know? <laughs> well, we'll be on the lookout for that, supporting you as always, and I honestly do hope that these borders will open, that COVID will calm down because it, Amsterdam is not the same without you here at least once a year. I feel I like, you know, it. I always get to see you. You're one of the most consistent friends that I have in this industry. And I, I miss having you here, even if it's just Thank for you, a Ma. day. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. For real. All right. But uh, yo, big up. And thank you, Ma, for having me. You know what You're I'm saying? Welcome. We'll talk I, soon. I'll, all right, cool. That's all, all right. I want to hear. I appreciate you. Love you, girl. Bye. Be safe. Bye-bye. So, people, thank you again for tuning in today. I'll be back uh, on Wednesday with the amazing Cat Core from Third World, live from Jamaica. And next week, I have Genesis Elijah from the UK. I got uh, some more people lined up. I got Bahamadia coming up. I have, trust me, you want to stay tuned in. Thank you so much for, for uh, watching and spread the word, spread the live. It should be on um, after I get off here. And I hope everyone stays safe and healthy and uh, stay creative. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.